Hey guys, Dust Letter Magic here, and it's time to revisit the topic that was really popular. I got a lot of comments on this one, and uh, people seem to like the video somewhat. So how do we fix the land problem in Magic? The unavoidable odds catching up with you, oh no, you just lost because luck. AKA mana screwing. And if you haven't seen the original video, it's like two or three back from this one, so feel free. But uh, I did ask in the comment section, hey, does anybody else have a good idea? And boy, did you. Some of them were, you know, interesting, but mathematically not likely to do any better. But a uh, couple people came up with some really good ideas, so I thought, well, let's share them because it's very interesting. I hate to start with the absolute best one because it makes the other ones look worse, but uh, I'm very excited about this one. This is subtle and it follows along with the you can't cheat it, manipulate it, you can't use it to accelerate a, a hand or a draw or a deck or whatever that's already doing fine. So you don't want to take one that's doing fine and just shoot it straight to perfection. You only want to benefit the person when they are losing, as it were. So the best suggestion, and I'm going to modify this a little bit, was um, if you mulligan 2-6, then you can choose to either scry 1 or fetch a basic land from your deck. So this would really only help if you had a one lander and you threw it away, or just garbage cards, I guess, and then, okay, now you're at six. Do you scry one because you're good and you just want to, you know, see the next card to make sure it's not a disaster? Because I'm sure you don't, you know, with six, have the perfect opening hand at this point. Nothing's impossible, but it's a lot less likely. So then if you're looking at another one lander, uh, the ultra early okay the game hasn't even really started yet land screwing or mana screwing whatever you want to call it it will have basically already made you lose the game i mean you can still win starting with five but it's insanely unlikely like everything has to go perfect after that sort of depending upon what kind of deck you built so if you get stuck with one or your your hands are garbage and then you go to six you get stuck with one again you can go fetch a second one and the trade-off is you don't get to scry one it's so subtle, it, it wouldn't even really fix the problem because after that, I mean, like I said in the original video, getting to three mana is usually the problem. And if your deck absolutely fails without getting to four, you either need to be running like 24 lands, which would reduce the odds of this happening to practically negligible, or you just built your deck wrong. You have you just have a bad curve, pretty much. Like something in your deck that costs one, two, or three should do something, at least to do anything to the game. I mean, run like a Bantu's Last or something. So this would not fix it once the game gets going, but it would fix the ultra early game mana screw, and I can't really think of a downside. I mean, how would somebody exploit this? They're giving up a scry that they probably need to get a land that they absolutely need. Like, even if they took the option, they're, they're still kind of worse off than if they had the scry option and already had two or three lands in hand, so they're good. So it's very, very, very subtle, and very subtle changes are how you tweak the game very slightly without just shocking people. So I'd say it's the best solution, it's just as soon as the game actually starts, you're, you know, you're still gonna maybe get land screwed. So other people said uh, once per game, just one time, you can forego your card draw to just go get a, a basic land and it enters play tapped. So you can't do it when you're like, you know, sitting on four lands and then you're like, oh, fifth one, cool. You know, fifth, uh, you know, fifth turn, I went one, two, three, four, but now I, there's no way I'm getting a fifth land. Boom, go drop it in that turn and then drop a five cost. So it comes in tapped, you're waiting another turn cycle. Maybe you do have a spell left that costs two. It's just, okay, your, your hand has two or three or four cards that cost three and up. And you're like, well, at least I could do something this turn, but I'm going to skip my draw and go get one land and you can do it one time. It's clunky. It's another thing to track. It's another thing at tournaments where you could be like, oh, did I do it? Did I not? But then again, like the whole, did I drop a land this turn or not? And then somebody double drops and it's, oh, plausible deniability. I didn't know I double dropped. I'm, I'm too concentrating on the turn to which everybody with a brain says, then do a little check mark, like at the beginning of your turn, draw a little box on your paper that you use to track your life total, and then when you drop a land, put a check in it. It's the same thing with people who forget how many games they're on. Write it down. When, when you start, make three little boxes, and as soon as you win one or they win one, write their initial or write your whatever, just anything, put a check mark in it. And then you're like, yeah, we played game one. Check, then we played game two. All these uh, binary conditions, as we call them in programming, uh, or state variables or whatever, just track them. Hell, you could have a little coin that you flip over, a little token that you flip over, and a homemade emblem or something. So it's really not that big of a deal. And plus, who wouldn't remember if they fetched a land? I mean, it's 
It would have been like five minutes ago. Like, yeah, you fetched land. You did that. Duh. So once again, there is a trade-off. It's like, okay, I'm land screwed. I don't just need a free charity land. Because remember, if you're just like at some point, you're like, I need another land. And then some rule, some mechanic, some whatever lets you just go get a land. Um, people would abuse that. Like I said, people who are already at four or five or six lands are like, oh, I got to get to this seven cost absolute destruction spell. Cool, I'm going to go get a free land. Yay, that I didn't need. So the other option is, oh, you can only do this when you have two or less lands. But that's the thing. What if a deck runs just fine with two lands? You know, some kind of white or red speed rush deck, it, it's probably going to do just fine with like burn and two cost creatures. So you let them go get a free third one and you're in trouble. So I would say, one, you can't draw a card that turn. And two, you can go get a land and it comes in tap so you can't even use it that turn. So it's like last ditch effort to save the game. And if you come back from it, it's almost on your opponent at that point because your opponent didn't take advantage of basically you losing an entire turn. Other people recommended one that I don't like, uh, make more lands that tap for two. See, that's one of those things that would benefit people to accelerate them all the way to the moon way too quick. Too much mana too early has been wrong with modern for a long time. That's why they had to ban, oh, just a ton of stuff, like a lot of those red, you know, pay three, get five kind of spells. Like, Black Lotus and Dark Ritual are a little much, and those only give you the mana for one turn, unlike a land. But yeah, if you help out both uh, people equally, it's never going to work, because, oh, cool, I used this to not get mana screwed, and my opponent used it to get even further past me in, in the progression of, I don't know, power and mana availability. Now, another commenter had an interesting uh, idea that's almost the exact same thing as the whole fetch thing, except the problem is you get to, like, shuffle your library, you're thinning your lands, which is, you know, not great, because you're basically just summoning an evolving wild zone of nowhere. Like, oh, I I'm going to skip my draw step and go get a land. Well, it's not no effect on the, you know, future land draws. So one person said, okay, you should be able to convert any card, uh, I want to say one time, because I feel like being able to do this, like, every turn would be really bad. But you can, like, play it face down, and it becomes a colorless land. So you don't get the color out of it. It's an emergency method, and you lose one of your cards. The problem is with that one, it might be, like, an irrelevant card that you didn't need anyway. It might be, like, a duplicate of a legendary. Just something that isn't terribly relevant, but should be in the deck. I mean, anybody can build their deck so poorly that there's irrelevant cards all over. So instead of fetching the land, you just make one of your cards be the land. So then you do get to card draw, but you don't get that card i guess whatever card you're converting into a land i think that's that's interesting especially making it colorless i mean it would be too much of a benefit to colorless decks i think and playing a card face down but not having to be a morph and then it, it stops being what it originally was and then if they destroy the land do they get to see what it is i mean yes according to the rules by the way so i think that's a little like it, it's more streamlined but it's a little clunkier too i'd say just let them fetch a land but that also allows color fixing too and that's the thing the original idea somebody brought up that's just, hey, skip your draw step and go get whatever land you want, it would enable people to play three colors way easier. Because what if they do have three lands? It's just they're waiting for their third color. And fetching a basic, I mean, okay, it doesn't help you with like a double white spell, for example, if you need two white. Uh, what you really need are dual lands, but you know, you'd have to be able to fetch a basic land. And about a hundred other people uh, suggested what actually another card does. There is a card that does this. It says, go into your deck, get any number of lands, put them into exile, and at any point you may, it's either play them or draw from it instead of your library. It's one of the two. And it only works for planes. But everybody said, okay, simple, simple, simple. Make the lands be a separate deck. And then you can either draw from either or, or you can draw from it every turn, which is basically like Hearthstone and all the others that, that just automatically give you something every turn. I really don't like that version of it because, um, you know, what, being able to never draw a land is uh, not good. It, it would make decks too consistent. I believe I said this in the original video. If you went like 40-20, where you could have 20 lands... Well, honestly, you'd probably only need a deck of 10 lands now that I think about it. You shuffle them separately, you sleeve them separately, and then the other deck would be, you know, 40, we'll say, or 50, maybe. I don't know. It basically would be 40. It would be too consistent because you'd never draw a card you didn't need in theory. Like, if you built a 100% creatures deck, it's like, oh, cool, another creature. You would never have a misdraw. And then the other problem is... On turn five, you would always have five mana because you would get a free, you know, draw and drop every single turn. So the cleaner tweak to this that other people said was um, you get to draw two off your land deck to begin with. Then you draw five cards off your regular deck. And then you can either draw a card from your main deck 
or you can draw a card from your land deck depending upon what you need. It would fix the problem. It, you're still drawn blind, so you don't know if you're going to get a good color fix. Um, you could make the pile 20 lands just needlessly so that people can't just run... You know, if it was 10, you could run like 8 dual lands and you'd be good to go. It would make fixing an acceleration way too good. So um, if you played nothing but spells that were 3 and 4 and 5 cost, you could just, okay, cool, 2 automatic, 3, boom, and then just start dropping bombs on them. It would really cheapen the 1 and 2 cost spells. I don't like it. I think it's a little bit much. It's just a little too perfect. I think we should just focus on, okay, you're you're stuck. Skip your draw one time, which is like the miniature version of this, and then go get a land, and you can only do it once. It's just emergency fix. That's it. Minimal, minimal, minimal. Just save somebody from absolute mana screw oblivion. And then the rest of the time, people can still overdraw lands. They can top deck a land, and it'll ruin it. That'll you know, maintain the power of scry and extra draw. Uh, so let's breeze through a couple other subtle things that I thought were pretty good. Uh, at least one person said, well, bring back the mana mulligan, because remember, back in the day, you could only mulligan if you had zero lands or seven lands in your hand. Otherwise, you're stuck with it. So if you were forced to keep a one lander, you lost. So people are saying, well, bring that back. If you have zero lands, you get a free full mulligan. Like you get to redraw seven, not six. The problem is people running like burn speed decks would just run 17 or 18 lands instead of like 20. And they would just, oh, redraw, oh, redraw, 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 redraw. And then, oh, look, I have two lands. Cool. Because I would apply it to zero lands or one land. And you could do a hybrid where it's like, well, if you have zero, you can redraw your whole hand. If you have one, you can drop one card and go get a basic land in its place or something. But the problem with this is you have to prove it. In order to prove it, you have to show your opponent your entire opening hand. Oh, here's what deck I'm playing. Here's exactly what cards. Here's what I'm starting with. I have hand disruption and creatures. Oh, I have a removal, so don't cast anything too important. Oh, and I'm holding a negate. Have fun with that information. That land ain't going to make up for the fact that they know what's in your hand. Trust me. There's a reason Gataxian Probe was banned. Well, there's two reasons, and that was one of them. And one of the most common suggestions was play Force of Will instead. Okay, there was one more interesting idea that I gotta share. Um, once you get below 10 health, you can go fetch a land, straight up. Or put a restriction on it. it. Once you get below 10 health and you have less than two lands, you can go get one. Because that's like, okay, you're really losing at this point. But it is exploitable. I mean, Death Shadow, you know. It's not perfect, but it's interesting. So what we have determined is you guys are really creative, although almost every comment was like, I saw another TCG that did things like this, so maybe not. But what do you think about all these ideas? I think at least two of them are absolutely brilliant. They should implement them tomorrow. It would work pretty much perfectly. Some of the other ones, a little bit too exploitable, a little bit too, uh, too weird. Too different, too, too odd. It would change things too much. Mostly it would just like throw the math off. But all I can say is hopefully Wizards does something about it. I know whatever they do, if they change something related to this, it would be highly controversial. But then again, really nobody had anything bad to say about the Scry 1 mulligan. Because they're like, yeah, I mulliganed. I, I could use a little tiny, 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 tiny fraction of a tiny bit of help. And that's all it was. So let me know what you think down in the comment section. I will see you guys next video.